It's a great conference. This is my third Cisco Live, so I started coming in 2009. And the interesting thing is, is that when I was here in 2009, I was like the only virtualization guy here. So like, you know, a lot of the other popular bloggers and guys on Twitter, I was the only person here. And so it's really been an evolution over the last three years. The first year, very little virtualization. I mean, even on the network side, there just wasn't a lot of talk about it. So I ended up going to a lot of courses on switching and things like that that I needed. And this year, you know, I've spent the last two days in network virtualization and segmentation and multi-tenancy. And, and it just shows kind of that progression that the whole industry has taken. And now you're seeing, you know, I was in end-to-end -end virtualization yesterday when the largest rooms and it was packed, you couldn't get a seat. So it just shows that the networking world is having, you know, whether they want to or not, is being forced into this virtualization side. And it also shows, at least for me, that most people, when you say virtualization, they think server consolidation and VMware. And really, there's so much more to that. You go to EMC World, and it's about storage virtualization. You come to Cisco Live, it's about network virtualization and how we connect data centers. So it's really, really starting to merge these together. So it's now got to the point where you can't just go to your conference, I'm the network guy, I go to Cisco Live. It's getting really interesting how you really need to have interest in each different one and maintain your technical proficiencies in each different area. Sure, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the same advice we gave the VMware admins a couple of years ago. You know, you, if you've been server admins and that's what you've been doing, you need to start understanding how the network works and how you connect and storage is the same way. And now the other side is having to move that direction because the way we're doing consolidation is not just the server guys are putting 10 servers onto one physical, hey, that's great, I just, I, I do the port configuration. Now we're talking about workload mobility. We're working about cloud infrastructure. I have two data centers in different states. How do I shift workloads back and forth seamlessly, connect those, you know, layer two, OTV, Trio, I mean, there's all these things now that are coming out from Cisco and other network vendors that are driving these other projects. And if you're not staying current with that, you're going to be behind. And when your organization says, we're putting our second site somewhere else, we're out of space, how do we shift workloads back and forth as we need it for performance or power utilization, you're going to need to maintain that. So I suggest that a lot of network individuals, I mean, either get the training they need or go to VMworld or go to some of these other sessions and you know start getting those technical proficiencies and understand how you relate to those guys. Don't just learn about OTV and what it does. Learn about why you need it for that workload mobility and be able to discuss it with the other members in your organization so you can really put it in place and be really effective at it. Sure, so I was lucky or unlucky to uh, get selected for two sessions this year. So I did one last year that I'm kind of carrying over as uh, an updated version. So the first one is going to be on the Cisco Nexus 1000V virtual distributed switch. I do implementation, operation, and management. And I, I do a complete walkthrough of these are the components. This is how they're laid out. This is how they communicate. This is how we deploy them. This is how you do your basic configuration. And then here's what you'll do in a day-to-day -day kind of a management or you know change control. So it's, it was very popular last year. There wasn't a lot of information out there on the 1KV. We're seeing a lot more deployments of it, and I hope it's going to be another popular session this year because the 1KV is it's one of those things that until you see it and understand how it talks, it's very, I don't know, it's very nebulous, and so people can't wrap their heads around it. But usually once we walk through the components and here's how they talk, and if you think about it like a chassis switch, you see people click. And so that's the first session. The second one is kind of uh, similar. It's a technical deep dive on VMware's distributed virtual switch as well as the Nexus 1000V. So I do a lot of pre-sales work for my company and I talk to a lot of customers who say, okay, here's our requirements. Do we do V switches, distributed virtual switches, Nexus 1000V, what's the difference and what do I get? And, and then once I deploy it, which one do I really wanna own and, and feed and care for? So it's really a comparison of those what the complexity entails, what the implementation entails, and more importantly, day-to-day -day management, what do I need to worry about on each of these? So it's kind of, if you know you're going through the 1000V, the first session is where you want to be. If you're on there where we're, we're scaling out and maybe we've got some requirements, what do I need to know? The second session should be a very good session. You know, the new announcement, announcements from VMware are big. Uh, Cisco continues to evolve their data center nexus strategy, unified compute strategy. 
you combine all those together, and, and this week at Cisco Live, my focus is on what I say is inner data center connectivity. So again, things like OTV and Lisp, and what we're doing there, that's what really excites me now, because with announcements from VMware continuing to push this stretch clusters and things like that, uh, storage vendors doing the same, now we can do active, active storage, I mean, it's just continuing to evolve, so things that we thought a year or two years ago would be, man, that would be great if, I now have good customers coming and saying, okay, we're ready, we're building the second data center over here, how do we connect them, how do we ship this stuff around? So I think for me, that's what's really exciting is, is not one thing, but all of these different things coming together to that point. Generally, I mean, my biggest pushes are with the new announcements from VMware, um, virtualizing those tier one applications. Uh, we're starting to see more and more people worrying about how do we secure those once we virtualize them. How do we connect them and get end user connectivity? I've been saying it's been the, you know, the third anniversary of the year of VDI for a while now, but we're starting to see people really put those in place. So it's moving from theoretical to implementation and realistic. So depending on where you live in the IT ecosystem, there's a lot of things. You know, Cisco here, uh, it's all about you know, switching and 10 gig uh, implementation and adoption and virtualization in the data center. For the VMware side of the house, for the server guys, it's all about the new vSphere 5 announcements and what those bring, especially with disaster recovery and replication. And you know, for end computing, VDI just continues to mature and it's at a point now where people need to look at it and stop doing POCs and pilots and really start looking at what they can do to deploy these today. It's up to the customer requirements. I mean, that's my pre-sale sidestep answer, but you know, if, you, if you're VMware shop and you like simplicity and easy to manage, Vue's a very good answer and it continues to mature very quickly. Uh, if you have a lot of remote offices, performance and efficiency across your connections is what drives you, then Zen Desktop is really the push. So we usually, in a lot of cases, we'll work with a customer and get their requirements and in some cases we'll do a bake-off. But usually with the requirements we can kind of figure it out. And, and right now I think we're close to a 50-50 split. So even the marketplace is still kind of which one do you want to do. So it's a great question and over the last year we've kind of seen them go back and forth depending on VMware releases theirs and then Citrix releases a new version of Zen Desktop and they've been leapfrogging each other. But it's just a question of complexity, which is something you'll hear me talk about a lot, um, and requirements of what you need to do. So balance those two out and make your decision. So there really is no favorite right now. Um, next for me is just going to be kind of getting ready for VMworld, uh, getting my head around and really starting to push out a lot of content on VMware and the changes that they've announced. Uh, I know a lot of people have kind of been waiting on some of that and uh, continuing with some of the Cisco technology. So we've got a lot of good projects coming up with data center connectivities and implementing OTV and Lisp and uh, really start working around some white papers, case studies, things like that, uh, showing, hey, look, these aren't theoretical. We're doing these right now and this is how people are taking advantage of it and this is what's driving costs down. So for me, for the rest of the year, that's a lot of what I'm working on. Uh, my blog is, you know, I don't have a fancy name for my blog. It's just jasonnash.wordpress.com. But through this year, some of the things I want to do with vSphere 5, I've been holding back. I want to do kind of a vSphere 101 series of blog articles. Here's how you do simple things. Here's how you deploy, you know, HA. Here's how you use DRS. Here's how you monitor it. Things that a lot of people, as they, you know, start to step into VMware, you know, go through those paces that a lot of us have taken for granted for a long time now. But, you know, I still see a lot of people out there who have not consolidated servers. And it seems a little weird because I've got so many that that's the standard deployment model but there's a lot of them out there that have kind of held off for political reasons or different things. So I want to start doing some of that. I love teaching and instructing, and I think that's a quick way to do little, you know, call it sound bites or snippets of, hey, do this, do this, do this. And then if you need to know how to do something, you can just look up a 10 minute video on how to do it. I've done a few of those in the past. They've been very popular. So I just kind of want to continue some of that.